Hello and welcome to this second tutorial on working with Encore. So far we've imported a series of timelines and we've had a look at the flow chart so we've seen how our project works and we've renamed our project so that it's actually called Treasure. Now we're only using one timeline in our project at the moment so that as we look at this flow chart what would happen is we would put our disk which is named Treasure into our DVD player and instantly it would play this timeline and then well if we click on the timeline well actually over here in the properties we can see what happens. Well it's not really going to work necessarily predictably because it says at the moment the end action is not set. So we're nowhere near ready. This project is nowhere near ready. What we really want to do is to put our disk in and have a menu and then people be able to click down and choose one of these timelines from the menu. So how do we create menus? Well notice over here that there is actually a menu tab but also over here you have something called library. Now yours might look like this and you need to have content loaded from your disk and if you're actually only working on a sample version of Encore you might actually find that you don't have all of this loaded. Now this first tab here says toggle display of menus and all the menus that are inbuilt as examples or samples for you are shown and I can click these are all blank and then we've got some fairly interesting ones and they've all got buttons associated with them. Notice that you can choose from sets as well. So I could for instance go to the corporate set and it initializes and loads up the library. Give that a moment or two to do. And there you go. Click again on the menus and you'll see that I've got all kinds of different corporate menus. And you can go through all the different options that you have here. Once you've chosen a menu that's suitable for you, let's choose um, Let's choose this corporate clean menu here. You can double click it and it's imported into your project. And notice under the menu tab, I now have a menu. And notice I've also got a menu viewer here. I can double click on that and here is my menu, all ready to go with buttons. So I've got a series of buttons that I can change and move around. If you want to change the name of any button, you simply click on it you go over to the properties and where it says introduction there I can change that simply to start hit return and you'll see that the first one's changed to start so you can change the name of any of these buttons simply by clicking on it going to the properties panel pull this down so you can see more and then you can change what it says so credits I could change to final and again hit return and there it is so that's how we've got all the buttons in here but what if it's not quite right we want to change it a bit where well, you can right click on it and you have an option to edit the menu in Photoshop if you click on that Photoshop is loaded and this menu is set up ready for you to work on and then click OK and there is our menu ready to work on if I then wanted to change the colors or add other bits and pieces you could do it in Photoshop without any problems at all but I want to show you how to create your own menu from your own work so if I go back to my actual project and in fact if I actually go back one stage even to Premiere Pro and I can find say this picture is perfect for my DVD menu and I'd love to use that frame what I need to do is save it as a Photoshop document because menus must be PSDs. So how do I do that? Well, notice we've got this little icon down here which says export frame. You can click on export frame and you can save it as anything you like. I'm saving mine as a PNG. It's called speeded up time still. That's fine. I'm going to save it on the desktop. Click OK. That's now saved and I can go back to Photoshop and I can go file, open, I can navigate to my desktop and there's my still image double click on that and bring it into Photoshop now the pixel aspect ratio may not be correct let's have a little look view pixel aspect ratio yes it's interpreted it as square pixel whereas actually my footage was HDV with a pixel aspect ratio of 1.33 so if I click on that you'll see that it looks a little bit straighter and now I can work on this image before it goes into Encore. For, so for instance I could create a new layer and I could do a few adjustments. So maybe I could do a levels on it. Have a look at the levels. Yes I can definitely bring up my blacks. Bring down my whites slightly and possibly darken the image up just a tad. And maybe if I wanted to I could play with vibrance. Click on the vibrance and maybe pull the colour up a little. Just to make it a little bit more vibrant for a menu. 
and then possibly I might even put on a curve so that I could pull down the highlights because they're a bit overblown in places and possibly lighten the darks a bit to give a slightly better contrast overall. There you go. Anyway, you can play with the image and do whatever you want with it. Once you've created the image or once you've made your image just right in Photoshop, you simply go File, Save, and make sure it's saved as a PSD. That's the important thing. You can't use a menu without a PSD. And then name it, I'm going to call it Menu 1. Because obviously, in a project, you might have multiple menus. So make sure you give them names that mean something to you. I'm going to click Save. And now, I'm going to go back to Encore. I'm going to open up Menu, and I'm going to click on where it says Menu, the one that we brought in from the menu selection over there. And I'm just going to delete that. I'm going to double click in there and navigate to my desktop and bring in menu 1. Menu 1 is brought in and you'll see under the menu tab over here there is our image ready to go. So we actually have a menu but the problem is we don't have any buttons. We can look at our flowchart over here again so we can see actually look our menu 1 is orphaned. Well what we could do is we could take our disk and click at the end of it and you'll get what's called a pick whip and if you keep pulling the pick whip you get down to where it says menu 1, let go, and you'll see that when we put our disk in, the first thing that plays is menu 1. And if we wanted to, we could take the output of menu 1 to our individual timelines and make them play. But actually what I want to do is create buttons and use those buttons to wire up my menu. And I'll show you how to do that in the next tutorial. Mm -hmm.